Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. How many of you guys ever noticed the similarities here? Hmm, could it possibly be that the United States and our whole political system is the construct that, you know, you could obviously see what looks to be a menorah there, but it's even farther back than that because the menorah is all about um, again, a people, a certain group, remembering who they are. And that is really what the Talmud is. Remember who you are. And most people on this planet are a wild mix of all sorts of backgrounds that would probably blow their minds away if they really understood how deep and how far uh, the human seed is spread. I know, you know, I want to say a huge thank you for a family member who sent sent us this. And it's like one of those things where once you see it, you can never unsee it. But also, I think this is a great example for to bring up about this so-called veil that really there is no veil. Everything is right there. It's it's embedded in, you know, the very essence of this structure and it has very deep purpose. And in fact, there is like spell casting. This is a good example of spell casting to me. Absolutely. Uh, everything that's done on humanity is in some ways, uh, it's done through spells, programming. And, you know, again, it takes a long time to decondition the programming. So I thought this was curious. And while I was at it, just to reiterate and show a few of the things about DC, honestly, um, there may be some good energy in DC. There are some good people in DC, um, but honestly, for me, the energy's always felt overwhelmingly uh, yuck, and 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 I personally, I haven't been able to stand the the uh, DC energy for decades. You know, going back to. Gosh, the other side of 9-11, it always, it was just something that made me feel like I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. Even when I did take the kids to see the White House and the monuments and all, et cetera, et cetera. But when you recognize that it's, it's founded truly on very, very demonic satanic principles and black magic, you ever see the owl at Bohemian Grove? Well, you could see somebody's depicting that owl overlaying it on the Capitol building. They were very precise on putting everything together. And again, the Freemasons were a big, big part of this uh, in putting together uh, what we now have as Washington, D.C., the capital of the U.S., the new Atlantis in some ways um, for the system. As you see, the three, uh, let's say, mega regions the three, uh, the, the dark trinity, <laughs> yes, the globalist stranglehold, yes, London, Vatican, and D.C., again, control the religion, the money, control the military. That's what gives control to the power system. When you look to Baphomet on the left and you look to George Washington's representation on the right, what do you see? I mean, seriously, we see it depicted time and time again. It's so darn clear that Washington is emulating Baphomet. Washington is emulating Baphomet. And yet, who's guarding the Capitol to the U.S. Capitol building? A depiction of Ares, Mars, you know, God of War, Lord of Hosts. How many times do you see that in the Old Testament? Lord of Hosts. What's hosts? Armies, conquest, battle. Yes, uh, the system that's in place has been a system that has come to us from Mars. And if you look into the uh, Sumerian myths, of which there are many, 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 and again, you know, some will try to throw the whole baby out with the bathwater and just say, oh, Zechariah Sitchin was a mason. It doesn't matter if Zechariah Sitchin was a mason or not. That actually has been researched by multiple people, and, and there's really nothing either way uh, that's been found that's conclusive, a couple doctored photos. But either way, it doesn't matter because he's not the one that translated all these uh, tablets. He gave us the modern-day thought of, wait a minute, these are ETs, these are extraterrestrials. He's the first one that wrote a series of books saying it's all extraterrestrials. 
instead of looking at it from a um, you know a standpoint of purely mythological or even astro theological so he he was the first one that was kind of stating that but when you go back to the native legends all around the world they all knew it, uh, it because they didn't view them as you know creators of the universe no they view them as as their term gods would be extraterrestrials that's what they viewed them as these are beings with more technology that can push people with lesser technology around and they do mm-hmm. it, it is it's what they do and and they use this in their day-to-day lives they use this in their you know their their day-to-day goings-ons i i think what i see as i see they push a lot of the bible and they push a lot of you know sunday mass and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with getting together with your friends on sunday at all but how they push it and the indoctrination and the control aspect of it is what i i have a problem with and they use these entities they talk to their guides they energetically pull in their alien gods so that they can get people to do what they want but they turn around and they teach us that if you talk to your guides and angels to en- enhance your life, you're just talking to demons and they're going to trick you. So do you see kind of how this is going? It's like, do as I say, not as I do type thing, even though we could enhance our lives and people other lives through energy um, to to the to the good, to the good side of things, to the light side of things. We could do that, but they're so busy demonizing it and and hiring people to scare other people or try to scare other people that know about it and try to veer them off course. You know, they're just terrified that people are going to find out how the programming in this matrix works. And this is our uh, friend David over at ADAPT 2030. Uh, And we've talked regularly for, you know, probably six years now. Sometimes they're regularly, as we all get caught up in things. But this, I thought, was very good. This is one of his last videos he did. In 1964, the minimum wage was five, the equivalent of five 90% silver quarters. So, in other words, $1.25 back in 1964. In 2021, if you melted them down, the value of the silver would be $23.34. So in other words, people were working back then for the equivalent today of $23.34. Um, yeah, again, our system is a slavery system. And our, our dollars are only worth whatever it is that we agree on because in reality, uh, they're only as good as uh, their ability to start fires, which they do in more ways than one. When you look to this depiction on the left just a year earlier of Washington um, it it does look very very different different art artistic renditions but when I look at it um, I don't know to me the one on the right looks a little bit like JB if you you know I don't know it does but it's very different very very different and what's interesting is David points out facing in God we trust, pointing away from in God we trust. And then he did the little thing with that was done with that Prince Charles painting. And a lot of people are, you know, see when you do it up to a mirror a rendition again, going back to something that looks kind of like, uh, let's just say satanic symbolism again. It's all around us, always has been, always will be until the system is a thing of the past. We want to thank our patrons. Couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, there will be a new Patreon exclusive going up, should go up to tomorrow. You know, here you go again. A military plane carrying popular Malawi's Vice President Salos Chalima and nine others has just gone missing. Just went missing. Weeks after this is saying trumped up charges against him were dropped as he and his popularity continue to grow. He was arrested in November. Charges dropped last month. Now his plane has gone missing. Believed he's dead or assassinated, according to this. Um, Curious. We've seen an awful lot of oddities lately, especially with um, notable people, geopolitical people of influence and power just 
you know, leaving public life or dying or being, we're told that they're dead, but are they really dead? Curious. Uh, he started his career at Lever Brothers, which becomes Unilever. Um, you know, that's a powerful corporation. When, when you look at what he's been involved with, um, you know, 3G, uh, monetary systems, yeah, I, I can't think that he's a real, real um, clean, let's just say, politician, so to speak. But then again, in these times, you have what looks to be some sort of infighting going on. And whether it's real or just artificial, uh, that's something that's debatable. And you have to, I guess, look at each individual circumstance separately. Um, I think there will be a lot of people that are going to get fearful in these times because so much is being revealed. A lot of people probably want to just hit the highway. And if they are wealthy enough to go buy themselves a beautiful home somewhere way out in the boonies where nobody will know it's them and they could just kind of blend into the woodwork, the secret societies will pull you back in. Uh, if you are of use to them, they will pull you back in or, you know, things happen. Mm. You know, I was looking at this guy trying to see what was going on. And, and you know, I, I don't see that he's, you know, crossed the Rainbow Bridge or anything like that. But I don't see that he's in a happy place either. I think he's feeling a wee bit uncomfortable. Um, I wasn't really able to glean any more uh, than that. Just that he's sitting somewhere. He's not happy. He is uncomfortable. Is and he scared? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He's uncomfortable. And I think. Yeah, I would fear. say, yeah, fear. And then also the other thing is his, his family has been made aware. So close family has been made aware. So that was curious, and I don't know what else is going on there. But it feels like a kidnapping? Sort of. You know, it might be that. that That's what it sounds like. Um, all I can do, you know, that's why I like having Mike here, because I tell him what I see, and he can put it together better. So maybe that's what we got. Interesting. Well, we'll keep up with that one. Meanwhile, the Russian warships, nuclear submarines have arrived in Cuba. Um, they're in position where they can basically be, uh, you know, in a moment's notice, heading right between Cuba and Florida. And these do, at the last vessel I went through, was one of the ones that has the hypersonic missiles on it, which are so fast they say they are unstoppable. This is, again, what they tell us. Now, whether it would... When, when there's a strike, if there is a strike, hopefully there won't be a strike. Uh, as always, we want to have a peaceful outcome to things because none of these deaths really have to happen. None of them do. None of these wars really have to happen. But we won't really know. I mean, we'll assume it's what they tell us. So if they come and say, well, the hypersonic missiles were used, but it could be it wasn't hypersonic missiles at all. It could be that... You know, whatever it was came from space and was launched downwards. Or it could be even stuff that's already in place. It could be uh, stuff hidden under the ocean or hidden into the earth. Meanwhile, massive Russian-Iranian deal has been finalized officially. 20-year agreement now ready to be signed by Putin and the future president of Iran because there isn't one right now because he ran into... Uh, flying issues too, uh, yeah, coincidentally, but then of course there are no coincidences. So under this deal, Russia will provide Iran with the most advanced Russian military technology, nuclear subs, SU-35 production lines in Iran, T-14 Armada tanks, nuclear power plant assembly, ICBM missile technology. And here we see Russia is ready to strike any NATO airfield hosting Ukrainian jets uh, because a lot of Ukraine's airfields are not operational. So you have things being admitted that this means that the jets will probably fly out of Poland, Romania, and perhaps some other countries as well. Well, that makes them official targets. Um, Christoph, the Polish psychic, has been picking up more and more info. He sees this war lasting between 2024 and 2028 is what he's seeing. He sees the 2028 period not being like, uh, being more of like what we have with the North Korean and South Korean war. 
just where there's kind of a pause. There's no actual, um, nobody quits, nobody gives up. There's nothing official, and it's just kind of on pause. And, I, and that really hits me as very, very fascinating. Um, and we'll, we're going to try to target some of that. Now, Cindy is not good at targeting military stuff. It's something that's kind of like her higher self doesn't really want to be around that frequency. So a lot of that has to either come through my deciphering um and or the visions that that I get, which they only come when they come with me. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, we can try to remote view as best we can what that's going to look like, because I do think, again, what the system's going to find is, especially when they go and they do the conscription thing, you're going to have people rebelling left and right everywhere. It's just going to be kind of a, a very, very chaotic uh, time period. Ukraine is a gold mine. Now, this is what Lindsey Graham says. He, he says this is a very big deal on how Ukraine ends the war. Let's help them win a war. We can't afford to lose. They're sitting on a gold mine to give Putin 10 or 12 trillion dollars for the critical minerals that he will share with China is ridiculous. So, you know, again, you might think, well, he's just looking out for United States interest. No, they, they're all just looking out for their own interests. This is what motivates these politicians as typically the people that get put into these positions are the most power hungry, greedy, selfish people uh, that you can imagine because they serve the system when they're that way. If they really were high and noble, uh, they wouldn't go along with what the system wants. This is the type of person they can utilize. And so, yeah, would he like to be richer? He probably would. Yeah, I mean, can he spend all his money now? I doubt it. I can't even conceive of it personally. But at the same time, this is the nature of these beings. It's greed. So on one level, it is greed because, you know, if... Russia and China is controlling it. He won't be necessarily getting his cut, so to speak, from the gravy train. And this is how you know we are in that um, situation that we're in, because these are all the worst of the worst people that are in control, be it left or right. They're all extremely greedy, and the system can utilize that for its a a advantage. And yet, ultimately, the outcome is at least... They have a certain tier, I believe, of outcomes because there's so much free will. You know, if soldiers uh, are not giving their all, then they're going to make it tougher uh, for one side to win, even if that one side was supposed to win. And then when you get outright rebellions and people really up, rather point those <laughs> you know, weapons in a different direction towards, towards the top of the pyramid... Uh, yeah, it does make it tougher to, to manifest those outcomes that they have already predetermined. Mm -hmm. Well, if, you know, if you're someone who's easily manipulated through money, you're going to be able to land a position like this just because you're so controllable. But if you get someone in there that has some type of moral backing to themselves and it has a good moral compass, you're not going to end up there. And I really believe that they can see these people from a distance. They can see their energy. They can see their energy bodies. And they know if they're going to be morally, you know, to their moral standards, if they're going to be easily controlled. And, and that's what I see with, oh gosh, 101% of anybody that works for these governments, although I do hold out hope that there are some that do hear that angel on their shoulder and do the right thing, at least when they can, because I do, I kind of feel bad. They seem to be like stuck, like anchored in their position. And if they change their position, that could be very threatening to their very livelihood. And um, that's not good either. But yeah, I mean, you just have to really remember anybody that's in a place of power like that, they are highly controllable and they're just going to do whatever the controllers want them to do. So you have uh, 30 Ukrainian men escaping mobilization, i.e. the draft, stole a Ukrainian army truck with fake army license plates and charged through the border into Hungary where they surrendered to local police. The Hungarian government stated it will not hand the men back over to Ukraine. This is happening more and more often. I've seen videos of mothers um, trying to 
you know, beat uh, the army officers coming out, the army men coming out to drag their kids away uh, with brooms. And, and sometimes they actually get punched and knocked to the ground, even if they're, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 year old women, uh, they, they get hit and they take the kids away. When you realize that none of these wars have to be, and what they're doing is forcing a, a human soul here to do something so low and so uh, damaging to the soul, there's there's just no there's no way you can justify that. It, it is the biggest evil that there is. This is why the system has put in place things like countries. And nobody even questions the concept of countries. Why do we even have separate countries? Why do we, and, and again, I throw that out there for you guys. Do, have you ever conceived of uh, a reality where there were no countries? Where we didn't think of ourselves in such a divided fashion that you have to prove who you are, you know, to go from one place to another at all in any way, shape, or form? What does it do when we have countries and then we have states and then you know here in the u.s then you have different counties etc it's taxation 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 jobs and government jobs and government jobs and government more and more control for the power structure if you eliminated all that eliminate the un uh, the w eliminate all these big bodies there's no way they're controlling all of us this is how they control us yeah, I mean, it, it is really sad that many people can't even fathom the concept that we should be living on this earth as a free entity, uh, living our lives and having our experiences as an individual like we wanted to. You know, that, I mean, I think that's something that could be visualized. I think it's something that could happen. But I, I, I really believe that there's so many people who are probably very threatened by the thought because they've never been able to fathom it. They've never been able to embrace a world where everyone is free. I think that brings a lot of fear to people and um, we have a long way to go. I mean, as, as a people, as humanity ourselves, we have work to do on ourselves because we've deliberately been traumatized to such a high degree that it doesn't take very much from another person to make another person feel threatened. And because of that instant miscommunication, you, you have a fight like right now. And, and that's something that we as humans, I think we, we need to work on and, and we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. There's 450 billion reasons why Israel wants to control the Gaza Strip. Yeah, again, oil, gas fields uh, create another alternative route for um, the Suez Canal, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I know most of you guys have probably heard all that before. And yeah, it does increase, obviously, uh, the bank accounts of those that are in charge. Meanwhile, you did have four or five at this point in time. Uh, High-level military officials leave Netanyahu's uh, cabinet, so that's curious. Meanwhile, a ship docked in one of Israel's dockyards caught on fire. Uh, this says the cause is unknown. Other sources say it was a strike um, by Hezbollah. And others are saying, in fact, um, the war is not going so well for Israel. Well, certainly not from a publicity standpoint. They saved four people, they say yesterday. Four people, four, four hostages on the Israeli side, they say were saved. I saw reports saying uh, 220, 230 people over that were in the Gaza area, Palestinians were killed to make that saving of four people happen. And when you look at 45,000 hostages, 17,000 child hostages, uh, yeah, killed by Israel, so to speak, in the Gaza, I, I think it's way more than that. I cannot see with all that we've seen there that the number is not in six digits it has to be in the hundreds of thousands this is huge there were two million people living in this area and again every single hospital has been destroyed can you imagine if israel was like the size of the u.s or 
you know, again, operating like the Roman Empire. Well, the reality is, you know, again, the Roman Empire never died. It's just morphed. It, it's the same structure, the same system. It just simply changes its outward appearance. Now, you know, be aware of eggs. I just ran down the street to get uh, 36 uh, farm-raised eggs for uh, $6 locally. 36 for $6 is what, what I just paid. Uh, and it's a local person that has a ton of uh, chickens. Here you have Victorians warned to brace for egg shortages for months. Yeah, if the war does manifest out, you're going to have rationing. Again, uh, look and see what happened from historical records. You're going to have a lot of rationing. And then obviously, yeah, they've been killing birds forever here. I mean, the amount of birds that were destroyed with the plague upon the land and now with the bird flu, um, they're just disrupting the food chain because ultimately uh, they need to have a tiny portion of humans left. In fact, you know, again, just like you know, bird flu is just a pretext to go after the food supply. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, Kohl's supermarkets introduced temporary purchase limits. Yeah, this is the beginning of, of rationing, which we, we will see. And yeah, you know, it, it's there was some items, as you guys remember, I'm sure four years ago that were in tough supply like TP, <laughs> you know, but at, for the most part, it wasn't brutal with the plague upon the land. This time will be different because, again, with everything that's gone on, all those fires, all the, you, know, you name it, there's been so much disruption to the, to the food uh, chain. And then you add a war to it that's global in nature. Uh, yeah, this is exactly a card that they can pull because, you know, the wool is being pulled back from in front of so many people's eyes. You know, it's it's almost like um, some form of payback is coming. You know, people are able to show that they are fed up. So this is interesting to watch. This is interesting to see that people are able to say, hey, you know, we're really done with this. We are truly done with this. And then send a signal out to the rest of the planet that you guys are on notice. And I'm hopeful. I know that this is going to be a very slow churn when it comes to getting someone else uh, in, in the seat because that someone else is still going to be controlled. So we don't know how much real change we're actually going to see because usually when they get themselves in that position of power, they realize that they have no power. <laughs> Somebody turns on the light and they can see who the real controllers are. So they're not able to exercise and, and do everything that they really probably did want to do for the people in some way, shape, or form. Uh, they understand that they have to play a role, and that's still kind of where we're at, but it is it is good that it does seem like people are ab able to exercise that throat chakra. Yes, and so you have Marine Le Pen warning the French president, Macron, that he will soon pay the price for his treachery. Uh, and this quote says, can't wait for, to see her in charge of France. And that's 2027 when that comes up. Um, probably on the timeline we're on, we might still be in war. Let's hope not. And, and let's again hope we can avert it. It's just a matter of awakening people. That's why we've covered in the news instead of just talk about the spiritual, the energy work, hidden history, etc., because it, it's, it is, it's all about awakening enough people. As you see, the globalist Belgian prime minister, Alexander de Croo, resigns in tears after suffering a landslide defeat. Um, yeah, because, again, these are egoic people that want the limelight. They want the ability to have, you know, three or four mansions instead of just one and et cetera, et cetera. They, we know how they are. We know their tendencies. We know things like Macron was a banker, obviously, worked for the Rothschilds. You can't get more telegraphed than that. And it's all at the same time a scripted um, illusion. But, you know, the chapters can be edited, and we can also force them to go to plan B, C, D, E. I really do think that's the case. Uh, so what we saw in this latest rounds of elections, obviously Le Pen uh, party trounced Macron's 
And now Macron is calling a snap election, which they say could be dangerous. But again, you know, it's it's puppets on strings and they have backup plans always there. Belgium's prime minister resigned. Uh, Georgia Maloney's right wing party is set to win the most seats in Italy. Um, you got to walk carefully with any and all these people because, again, being that ego based, this is what leads us to all sorts of horrific uh, atrocities in in our history. Yeah, you, know, you got to think about things like the the Hundred Year War that existed. What purpose did that serve? A lot of louche, I'll tell you that. A lot of fear, energy, a lot of real suffering, a lot of pain. And think about a war that lasts 100 years. That's just an automatic uh, population reduction. And also, when you're in a martial law situation, it's a dictatorship. So it serves so many different purposes. You know, I... I guess I look at it as um, being in a really bad, toxic relationship. And when the person is tired of dealing with it and they really want to make a change, uh, the other person, the person that's been the abuser, realizes suddenly it's like, uh oh, you know, I have a problem now. Uh, I no longer have control. What am I going to do? And they do some things that are absolutely horrendous to try to stay in control. So that's the part of the relationship that can be the most dangerous and that, you know, we should just stand our ground and continue to put out the frequency of freedom. That That's what we want and utilize our throat chakras. Yes. And this is cuteness overload. You know who you could count on. That's who you could count on. Certainly no politicians, not this system, because ultimately we won't find salvation in the system. No, it's outside of this system. This system's been corrupt since day one. And it doesn't matter if we're just talking about the U.S., the U.K., anywhere in the EU. It's it's a global system. It's a global system. Again, it goes back, and you could see its origin uh, spoken of in, in the Bible itself. Uh, again, Genesis 11, Tower of Babel, look, you cannot have humans united. Let's split them up. Let's separate them. We divide them into tribes. We pit them against each other. They'll never know we're here. We're all going to get up, and we're going to leave this planet, and we're not, no longer going to show ourselves openly. We'll just govern through the ones that are willing to uh, throw everybody else under the bus to better themselves. And that's what we have. Mm -hmm. And we also have synchronized tail wagging. Now that's really amazing. That's, that's adorable. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.